Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, we're going to be talking about report writing. Now, engineers are notoriously bad at writing, so hopefully this video gives you some pointers as to what makes a solid engineering report. But first, let's talk about process. Engineering is science in action. And when we run investigations, we need to be aware of the scientific method. The scientific method is a process of inquiry based upon data that is gathered in the real physical world. The key components to the scientific method are a hypothesis, which is a question you want answered, a prediction, which is what you think the outcome will be, a testing phase, where you test your hypothesis, and finally, an analysis, where you compare the results of your testing to your prediction. While the scientific method is incredibly important to take note of, as engineers, we can work with a slightly different format. This is the IEEE conference format. It starts off with an abstract and is broken up into four main sections. An introduction, a methodology, your results section, and finally, a conclusion. This is the basis to all engineering reports. For things such as a dissertation or thesis, there's quite a bit more you need to add. For now though, this format will do nicely. Let's break it down. The abstract is essentially an advert for what you've researched. It can be more informal. Mention what you did, but don't give away the results. The introduction is an in-depth look at the problem you're trying to solve and why it matters that you're trying to solve it. Provide an overview to the steps you took, but don't go into too much detail. The methodology is where you talk about the technology you used, how you did what you did, and why you did it that way. What exactly was the process that was followed? You can include key snippets of your code here if you want, but only if it's really necessary to describe an algorithm. The results section needs to be purely factual. It's a good idea to include some tables and graphs. You should also try and justify your results, explaining if they make sense or if they're unexpected. And if they are unexpected, why did they end up that way? Finally, you write your conclusion. It should only be a few sentences and do exactly what the section header suggests. Conclude your paper. At the end of the paper, there's also this little section for bibliographies. So you might be wondering, what makes a good report? Well, there's a few things. Firstly, use professional language. Don't use pronouns. Tables and figures need to have captions. Tables have their captions above and figures below. You should also include your tables and figures as close to where you talk about them as possible. And use cross-referencing to reference them. Don't include tables or figures and not mention them in your text. Don't forget to proofread. It can greatly improve the quality of your report, and it makes it a lot easier and more enjoyable for the reader. Now, how do we go about writing reports? Well, I prefer to use LaTeX, or LaTeX, or however you choose to pronounce it. It may seem really complicated at first, but in comparison to Microsoft Word, well, we know what happens when you try to use Microsoft Word to create complex documents. In terms of editors, I like to use Overleaf. Using text and later can get pretty complicated pretty quickly, but Overleaf simplifies that. It handles all the packages for you, there's no installation required as it's all online, and collaboration is really simple. It works just like Google Docs. I'm now going to show you how to upload the provided template to Overleaf, as well as show you a couple of constructs to make your life a bit more easier and to make you feel a bit more comfortable using Overleaf. On the main page of Overleaf, select New Project, Upload, and drop your zip folder in. Give it a while to load, and there you have it. You're ready to edit. This is the basic project template. Personally, I use this template for almost all my reports. Along the side, we can see there's a bibliography, a body, figures, front matter, preamble, and a bunch of other stuff. The bibliography is where you write your references. References are written in something called bibtex. And while it looks confusing, there's a great website called Citation Machine, which allows you to convert URLs, articles, that sort of thing, into bibtex for you to easily cite in your report. This is how you cite a reference. It's as simple as that. In the body folder, you can see there's a couple of text files. Your conclusion is, well, where your conclusion goes. 
and same for the introduction, methodology and results. Any figures you choose to include in your report can be dropped in the figures folder for easy handling. This is an example of how you import a figure directly to where you want it to be. In front matter, we have the abstract. In the preamble folder, there's a lot of configurations and settings for LaTeX to use. You don't have to worry about touching this at all, unless you want to further customize your document. Right at the bottom, we have report.txt. This is the main file that Overleaf looks to when it's looking to compile your text document into a PDF. So anything that you want included in your final PDF, be sure that it's at least referenced some way through your report.txt. There are some really useful tools for writing LaTeX. That includes Tables Generator, which allows you to write really nice tables, Detexify, which allows you to draw symbols and get the given LaTeX code for it, and Citation Machine, which allows you to easily generate bibtex for you to use as references in your report. That's it for this video guys, thanks so much for watching, cheers!